Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the 74 TR6 restoration on the Rusty Beauties channel. And in the last episode, we assembled the front suspension. And in this episode, I was gonna start doing the rear suspension, but actually I have to do something else first because I'm not alone here in the shop. I have a friend who is helping me. He painted all the parts and everything, and he's still painting over there. Cool. So this is KJ, he's taking care of the exhaust now, priming and he's gonna paint it. Uh, what was this black flat? Uh, with a flat black ceramic paint. So he's been painting parts here and taking care of everything for me. And even the transmission with our A-type overdrive that we rebuilt a few years ago so it was for this car so he wants to paint also the differential but i put it on hold because i wanted to change the seals first before we do anything so i guess that's what we should do before we do the rear suspension i should take this put it on the bench and replace the seals and then he can finish painting it and then we can keep going with our suspension Okay, so we put it on the table and we're gonna start with this seal. And for this reason, we have to remove this flange. But before we remove the nut, we're gonna measure exactly how deep the nut goes because that's important. We don't wanna put too much preload on this bearing. It would be great if we, if we could record how many turns the nut will do until it comes out, but I'm afraid that uh, the only way to remove this nut is with the impact gun and we need a high-speed camera in order to do that. <laughs> okay, so this is inch and one eight socket. Good thing it came out easy because I, I don't have my puller and that would be a problem let's remove this and give it to kj he can start painting it we can assemble it painted now let's see how hard this is gonna be Okay, I'm gonna try here something that my friend Cutworm59 told me once in the comments that he, that's how he removes seals, drilling a small hole and running a screw inside, which eventually is gonna drive out the seal. So let's try that. That's a nice trick, Kat. Thank you so much. <laughs> Remember you told me that like years ago and I never used it so far. Never needed to, but I always had it in my mind.
There you go. So now here, we're gonna just clean it up. And we're gonna tap the new seal in. So the new seal, of course, it goes this way. So the lip is towards the oil. So it doesn't let the oil come, come out. All right, so now I'm gonna polish this a little bit with 1500 sandpaper and we're gonna go from there. All right, so I cleaned it up a little bit. This face here seems to be okay. So we're gonna put the hardware back. Once this bracket gets painted, we're gonna install it back and then KJ can paint the rest of the... Okay, so now we have to do the same thing here. But I'm not sure we're going to be able to pull out this flange because it's on a cone here. So I have just a little puller here and I'm pretty sure it's not going to work, but we will try anyways. So here we don't need to count anything because like I said, this is a cone here and doesn't put preload on the bearing. Time to place your bets. Our, I think our success rate here is zero. I tried that before and it never worked. The only way is to pull out now this flange from here and pull out the whole shaft with the bearing together and put it on the press and remove this like if you have a bigger puller maybe it's gonna work for me it never never did not even gonna waste my time heating it and hammering it i've done that before no Okay, now supposedly with a little tapping here on the flange, we should be able to pull out the whole shaft with the bearing together. There you go. So that's it. So our seal is on this piece here, but it is trapped between our flange and our bearing. I don't think the bearing can come out here because it has a flange, like it has a little ridge here on the shaft. So the bearing won't move. The only way is to pull out the flange. All right, so let's put it on the press and see. Like it's good if you have blocks like this with a notch so they can grab, so they can support most of the flange because if you just support it in two ends, it might bend it. But this way I'm pretty sure it's gonna be good. Let's see how much fight this thing is gonna put. <laughs> it popped and somehow you ended up on the floor fell off from your tripod <laughs> okay so this is the plate so now we're gonna go clean it on the wire wheel we're gonna clean this surface as well it's dark we're gonna clean this with the wire wheel and we're gonna change the oil seal which is right here so this surface is clean so now I can put the 
bearing with the shaft back and we can tap it back in it goes fairly easy okay needs to go a little more but this flange is going to push it when it goes there actually we can mount it now we can mount the seal when it is there but here i don't know why there is no gasket even on the schematic anywhere it doesn't show a gasket here and i guess this flange is considered to be enough to seal there but i always put a little bit of permatex for my gasket just in case you know i don't like it without my permatex is pretty dry but it works actually i like it when it's nice and thick like this this is what I'm using. It's called Aviation for my gasket by Permatex. People keep asking me because I use it everywhere on engines, on gaskets, on my burgers, on my pancakes, everywhere. So that's how it goes. Now the bolts are going to push it in. Okay, and now we can put the seal again with the lip forward that way. So the flat part is here, the open part is inside, and it goes in easy. And I can tap it around. Well, since we had it out, it was probably a good idea to put it on the press, but anyway. We can put our flange back. And that's it, this side is done. One more side, and then we're gonna give it to KJ to paint it. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's shiny, isn't it? <laughs> I wanted it to be a little bit more dull, like I wanted aluminum, silver, something, but it, for whatever reason, we have a chrome paint here, so that's it. It's a little bit too shiny, but that's fine. It's not gonna stay like this for, ever, for a long time, I'm sure. So here we have a cotter pin in this breather, and it needs to be uh, loose so it can breathe when it warms up the oil expands and would create too much pressure in the case if there's no breather here so if this is plugged then your oil might start leaking from the seals here on the sides from the excessive pressure inside so always make sure that this hole is clear and there's a cotter pin there so that so garbage doesn't go inside and that's it now let's assemble the front end so we have that bracket painted as well we're gonna take it we're gonna mount it here and then we're gonna put our flange and we have to measure and bring it back to where it was So that's it for this video guys let's finish it here and just leave it as a separate video for this little shiny thing so stay tuned for more because in the next video i guess we're gonna do the rear suspension and then we're gonna have another one for brakes and stuff like that so stay tuned thanks for watching guys